welcome to an episode of Mr. D and me. Today, Maddie, we're going to talk about my most favorite thing in the world, dinosaurs. And some of the things you see on this table are some of my best collection. First thing I want to show you is this book. Now, Maddie, this book I had not when I taught kindergarten, but when I was in kindergarten. Take a look at that book and look at the cover. What do those dinosaurs look like? If you could think of an animal living today, what would you compare those to? Just by looking at the cover. Maybe a lizard? Lizards, right. All right. When I was in kindergarten, when I thought of a dinosaur, this is what I thought of because all the books I read portray dinosaurs as reptiles, cold-blooded reptiles with forked tongues. Well, Maddie, I'm here to tell you something. The idea of dinosaurs being reptiles is really not right. People who study dinosaurs are called paleontologists, and paleontologists have made some discoveries that kind of prove the idea of dinosaurs being reptiles wrong. And that's how science works, because sometimes having the wrong answer is a good thing, because that means you discover something new. I'm going to show you another book. Now, this book isn't that old. It's probably about 10 or 15 years old. And I'm going to ask you another question. Does the T-Rex on the front of this book, does that look like a monster? Mm-mm. No. Does it look like an animal? No. Well, does it, in a way it does. All right, does it look like a dragon? Or does it look like something that was real? Looks kind of like a dragon. All right. Well, did it breathe fire? No. No. Are dragons real? No. No. Dinosaur, dinosaurs were real. real. Dragons were mythological. In other words, Maddie, what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is this book does a really good job of portraying dinosaurs not as bloodthirsty monsters, but as animals. Because just like you and me, dinosaurs were living thing, things, and they had the same needs. They had to eat, they needed water, they needed a home. And without those, they would have died. And we're going to talk more about that today. But I'm going to show you another picture. And I want you to tell me if this looks like a bloodthirsty monster. What about that? It doesn't look like one at all. No. And notice that's kind of down, covering its body. Do reptiles, like lizards and snakes, have that covering, covering their scaly body? No. No? It sort of looks like fur, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, that is really not fur. When a bird is born, they don't have true feathers. What they have is a down that covers their body and it helps keep them warm. Now more on birds and dinosaurs later. But I have something I want to show you. And it's not a book. It's this. Now, Maddie, do you know what type of dinosaur walked around with these in its mouth? Maybe a T-Rex? Tyrannosaurus rex. T-Rex was, as long as a school bus, it could look in the second story of a house without standing on its tippy toes. Its head was the average size of a full-grown man, and its mouth, it had 60 of these. Now, you don't have to have a bachelor's degree in paleontology to know what T-Rex ate. Was it a plant eater or was it a meat eater? Meat. It was definitely a meat eater. Now, if you notice, see how big that tooth was? Notice how it's really not sharp. This tooth, even though it ate meat, was not made for slicing meat. This was basically like an armor piercing bullet. When a T-Rex would bite down on something with a head of teeth like that, it didn't leave a slice, it left a hole about that big. So you take 60 holes that big, the dinosaur it bit down on probably wouldn't get up. But you have to understand, a T-Rex didn't have very big arms. So it didn't tackle its prey with its claws, it used its head. And with 60 of those, it probably did the job very well. And think about that. With a mouth full of these, and if a T-Rex didn't brush its teeth, I'm sure you could probably smell a T-Rex coming before it got there, right? Yeah, T-Rex is probably my favorite dinosaur. Now, I have a really cool magazine here. A few years ago, some engineers and some scientists working for National Geographic did a special segment on dinosaurs. 
and they took a T-Rex skull and they connected it to hydraulics in a computer and they opened the T-Rex skull <coughs> and they put a cow leg in its mouth. And when they pressed the button, they did some calculations and you know what happened when the jaws bit down? This is what happened. This is why you want to put your arm in a T-Rex's mouth. Because I think that would hurt, don't you? So paleontologists believe that a Tyrannosaurus Rex probably had the strongest bite of any creature ever to walk this earth, even stronger than a crocodile. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Now be careful though, because the way I talk, it sounds like T-Rex was this big vicious monster. But you know what? Just because you eat meat, doesn't make you a monster. More on that in just a moment. Like now, we eat meat and we're not monsters. No joke. Speaking of another meat eater. Yeah. This is my second favorite dinosaur. This skull belongs to a dinosaur called Velociraptor. Now, I'll be honest. I'd rather be in this room with two lions <coughs> and a grizzly bear than one of these. Why? Not because of the teeth or its claws, but because of what was right there, its brain. You see, these were some pretty intelligent dinosaurs. These dinosaurs, for their age, were pretty smart. And they had to be smart, because like lions and wolves, they worked together to take down larger prey. And they've actually discovered fossils of velociraptors fossilized with other plant eaters. And what they believed is, is the dinosaurs died while they were attacking a larger dinosaur. So they have that proof in the fossil record. But just think about this dinosaur. It's about the size of a person. And think about it, its ability to open its mouth like that. That's pretty scary, isn't it? And I want you to look at its teeth. What could you compare those teeth to? Maybe the tips of toothpicks? Mm-hmm. They look dull. In a way, but yet sharp. Sharp. I like to say a velociraptor walked around with a mouthful of steak knives. These teeth were not made for punching holes. These teeth were made for slicing. And so notice they're not as thick and round as a Tyrannosaurus. Now, we grow a first set of teeth called our baby teeth. Then you lose those, and then you grow your grown-up teeth. And you know what happens if you don't take care of your grown-up teeth? Do you grow anymore? <coughs> no, they fall out. They're <coughs> dentures. Well, raptors, like sharks, they were always losing their teeth because their teeth weren't that strong. So if they bit down on an animal and they hit something like a horn or a bone, those teeth would snap off. Well, if you look closely at this fossil, for example, right there, do you notice how that tooth is much shorter than the rest? Mm -hmm. Well, that is a tooth being replaced because if a tooth broke off, it would grow more to replace it. I think that's pretty amazing. And it'll way scary if it attacked you. Yeah, no joke. Now, picture this dinosaur walking around with feathers. I bet you never look at a chicken the same way again because they have discovered dinosaurs even the raptors with feather impressions down around the skeleton. I think that's really neat. Velociraptor. Now, going back to what I was telling you earlier, I keep on talking about these meat eaters, and I'm worried that the people watching this video are going to think the dinosaurs were these big, vicious monsters. You have to remember, my friends, that like us, dinosaurs ate meat. When we eat meat, we're not monsters, we're being part of a food chain. We're omnivores. We eat both plants and meat. Well, I'm sure some dinosaurs were omnivores too, but a T-Rex and a Velociraptor, I'm pretty sure they were strictly carnivores. But just because they hunted another animal didn't make them monsters. Predators have their role in the food chain. Would you agree? Take away the predators, nothing eats the herbivores, and herbivores eat all the plants. And that's not good for a food web. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, no joke. All right. Well, the teeth wasn't the only weapon that raptor walked around with. Just imagine if every day you had to put on your tennis shoes and on your big toe, you had one of these. They called this the sickle claw. The sickle was a type of uh, farm instrument that they would use before the invention of tractors and they would use the sickle. It was shaped something like this to cut the grass. Well, this was on their big toe and they would use this sort of like a cat. Have you ever watched a cat catch a mouse? Well, cats, can keep their claws in. But when they catch something, what do they do with their claws? They spike them out. Yeah, they come out, right. And they hold the animal down. 
Well, this was used sort of like the same way. A raptor was very agile. A raptor ran on two legs, and they would be able to run. Good runners can usually hop really well, too. And they'd hop in there, and they'd bring this down on the animal. And you have to understand, this is the bone. So this would be covered in the same stuff that your fingernails are made of. So this thing would be like a razor. And you can imagine the slash that that would leave. That would be a pretty bad slash, wouldn't it? The sickle claw. Now this belonged to a velociraptor. I have another one. Maddie, can you hold that? That's a toe claw, like this one. This one belonged to a velociraptor. This sickle claw right here, that belonged to a raptor called Utah Raptor. This is like comparing a Chihuahua to Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo and Chihuahuas are both dogs, but Scooby-Doo is a Great Dane, and it's a much bigger dog than a Chihuahua. So you get the point of what I'm trying to make here? They were both raptors, but this was a bigger raptor. This belonged to the type of raptor that's in Jurassic Park, all right? Much bigger. That's crazy, isn't it? Think about that. That's a big claw. It's almost a good thing they're extinct, right? Yeah. Yeah, no joke. I wouldn't want to live with one of them out in my yard. Totally. Now, I told you that they have discovered dinosaurs with feathers. Right here, I have an absolutely amazing fossil. Check this out. Now, this is the skeleton of a dinosaur that was found in Germany. It was called Archaeopteryx. Now, most people, if you walk up to most people and ask them to name a famous dinosaur, they could probably name something like T-Rex, Brontosaurus, Stegosaurus, Triceratops. All those dinosaurs are big. So most people think dinosaurs were these great big animals that walked around, and when they walked, they made thunder. Well, that's not really true. You see, it's just the big dinosaurs that gets all the news. Most dinosaurs were pretty small. For example, this Archaeopteryx, this is a full-grown dinosaur. Now, what do you notice about it, Maddie? How does this change your idea of a dinosaur? Well, you can see feather imprints, and yeah. you see, like, these bones and you mm -hmm. see places that normal um, dinosaurs wouldn't have like its neck bone it doesn't go out up here like we do. Sure. So what basically what you're saying is this dinosaur has characteristics of both birds and dinosaurs. For example the first thing you said were its feathers. Look at that. It actually has wings like a bird. But then if you look at this more closely you're going to discover that this isn't just like a bird. <coughs> this is actually a dinosaur. For example, it's a long bony tail. Now, birds have tails, but they're just made of feathers. Talking about shake your tail feathers. They don't have a bony tail like this. Birds have wings, of course, but they don't have these great big claws on their wings. Birds have beaks, but if you look closely at that, what do you see inside those, that beak? Um, you see teeth? Yeah, really tiny teeth. They believe Archaeopteryx may have ate small mammals or insects, but this dinosaur has teeth, like a dinosaur. Birds living today don't have teeth, all right? Now, I say that, but take a chicken, for example. Before it hatches out an egg, it has this little tooth at the front of its beak. It uses to punch a little hole in the egg, then it breaks out of the egg. But not very many people know that. And then speaking of the claws, there's actually one bird that's found in the Amazonian rainforest. It's called the howitzer bird. And when it's born, it doesn't have full wings. Guess what it has? It has claws on its wings. And if a howler monkey or if a snake slithers into the nest, they'll jump out of the nest into the water. And they can't fly, so they use those claws to climb up like a monkey back up to the nest. Now, not very many people know that at all. And then as it grows, it loses its claws and grows wings. So that's kind of a, a step back to what dinosaurs were really like. Now, before I put this specimen away, Maddie, I have another question. Looking at this fossil, can you tell what color this dinosaur was? No. No. Sometimes I ask that, to little, that question to little kids, and they'll say, Mr. D, that dinosaur was brown. And I have to tell them that, well, my friends, that was actually the color of the rock that this <coughs> dinosaur was, fossil, was fossilized in. Now, it could have been brown, but we're not really sure. So when we think about dinosaurs and we think about birds, well, whoa, think about that. 
Think about birds, my friends. What color is a crow? A crow is black. Black as coal, right? What color is a parrot? Multicolor, pretty much. Yeah. Sort of like a rainbow? Yeah. Yeah. So, who knows what color this dinosaur was? We could have said that it was green, brown, and black, camouflaged to live in a woodland ecosystem. But who says it wasn't hot pink? And if you think that idea of a dinosaur being hot pink, what's a dinosaur living today that's hot pink? Lives in Africa. It flies around. That would be the parrot. Or? Pretty much. A flamingo. You know oh, those yeah. pink birds you see in people's yards? Come on, Maddie. <laughs> now, I have an example of a feather here. Check this out. Do you know what type of bird this belongs to? The peacock. The peacock. One of my favorite birds. My aunt had peacocks at her farm. And what's really neat about this, I like to show the center of that feather. Look at that beautiful color. I think that's amazing. Now this belongs to the tail of a peacock. And a male peacock has these beautiful feathers. And you know what it does with this? It attracts mates. Yeah, it will display its feathers in this beautiful show. And the girls are like, oh, he is nice. So they do a little thing, and it's like you said, it's to attract mates. But I like to just point that out because look at the color. That's amazing. It's like a green, like a yeah, neon you know, green on the outside, and then like the blue and purple just yeah. turns into a yellow. Yeah, so I could say that's amazing. So when artists illustrate dinosaurs, they get to use their imagination. So that's one reason I really like to draw and color dinosaurs, because who doesn't like to use their imagination? All right. Oh, I've got one more specimen that I want to show you. Actually, two more. Grab that right there. Now, most people would look at that and say that that's a tooth or it's a claw to a meat-eating dinosaur. But, Maddie, I'm going to tell you right now, this sharp spike did not belong to a meat-eating <coughs> dinosaur. It belonged to a herbivore. Do you know what this belonged to? It's that one dinosaur. I think it's the Pegasaurus. You're close. Stegosaurus. Bam, you got it. Isn't that amazing? It's like the, when we think of some of these dinosaur names, they're like really long and they're hard to remember. Well, if you study dinosaurs as long as I have, you get used to saying them. I've got a picture of a stegosaurus and I want to show everyone. Well, I said it did, I had it marked. There you go. Yeah, I did have it marked. Now check this out. This was a stegosaurus. And they believed, while we're speaking about stegosaurus, see those plates on its back? They believed that this animal may have used its plates like a peacock to attract mates. But the spikes on its tail were definitely not used to attract mates. What do you think those four spikes were used for? Well, there's another dinosaur that has a cir circle on the back mm -hmm. and has spikes on it, and it uses it to swing and hurt other animals, so it could be a defense weapon. When you say defense, what do you mean? Football? No. Because when I hear the words defense and offense, I think of football. When you say defense in the animal kingdom, what are you talking about? To defend itself from Against other what? Predators. Other stegosaurs? Pred predators. When you say the word predator, what do you mean? Like maybe a T-Rex or something? Oh, so you're talking about other dinosaurs that would prey on it for defense. Sort of like a porcupine. What does a porcupine have that covers its body? Spikes. Spikes. Sometimes we call them quills. So if like a mountain lion is silly enough to try to attack and eat a porcupine, where do those quills go? They go right into its throat. And yeah, and mouth. that's not good. It can die, right? So like that, like you said, those spikes were used for defense. You wouldn't want to get hit by that, would you? That would leave a big old hole, right? Yeah. Good job, Maddie. I think paleontology isn't that hard. Can you put that over cover for me? Now, I have one more specimen I want to share with you. And it's actually one of my favorite. And of course, as soon as I hold it, you're going to know exactly what it is. What is that? It's an egg. It's an egg. Now, as far as we know, all dinosaurs laid eggs, like all birds. All birds lay eggs. And I like to take this moment when I share this egg, point out something very important. 
what do you think I used when I received this? What do you think I used to dig out the fossil which you're fixing to see on the other side? What do you think I used to clean this with? What kind of tools do you think I used? Maybe a wet rag. Okay. What, do you, what type of tool do you think I used to dig the fossil out that's inside of it? Maybe a shovel to just get the outer part and then like these little chippers. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. If I'd used a shovel, I would have destroyed it. You want to know what I used? Dentist tools. I used a toothbrush and a toothpick. Now, it's like, seriously, you did? Yes, because what you have to understand, Maddie, is that all of these dinosaur fossils, especially if you find them outside, are very fragile. Some are very small. And if I were to take a hammer to something like this, I would have destroyed it. So when paleontologists find something like a small dinosaur or an embryo inside an egg, they have to use tools like toothpicks and toothbrushes so they don't destroy their fossil. And the whole thing is, this may be the only fossil of this dinosaur they will ever discover. So if they destroy it, they lose that discovery forever. And that would be really sad. And that's sometimes happened in history. So yeah, no joke. Now, no joke, and I'm gonna show this to you. It took me like a month to dig that out. Of course, I was using very small tools, but I had to take my time, because if I got in a hurry, I destroyed it. And look at that, isn't that amazing? And I think this is a really good job of showing that dinosaurs were not these big, cold-blooded monsters that walk around and ate people. They were living things. They started out just like you and me, as babies. And the only difference is, this grew to something the size of a school bus. I don't think we're gonna get that big. But this would be a baby T-Rex. See, not that scary looking, right? In a way though, if it was like living mm -hmm. and walking, um, you can see, see those sharp teeth, so it would probably still hurt, yeah. but not as much as a real T-Rex. Right. Because even this small, it would defend itself. Now think about his mom and dad. Like if you go in the wild and you find something that's young and the parents are around, they're gonna let you know about it. So imagine if you walked up on this guy and the mama T-Rex was around. Mm, I'm sure it'd get you. You probably wouldn't be able to walk away from it fast enough. All right, now I wanna share with you guys something that you can do if you really like dinosaurs. It's a neat little craft activity. <coughs> and it involves paper plates. Get two paper plates, and the first one is gonna be for the body, and then you take another one. This is super easy. You make a head and a neck, and then a tail, and make a rectangle, and then you're gonna cut these out. You know what it becomes when you staple it together? You know what kind of dinosaur that is? Um, the long neck. Brontosaurus sometimes known as a patasaurus. And once you staple it together, you can paint it or you can color it, super easy. I'm doing this with my students right now. And you can hang it on your wall, have it forever. I love my dinosaurs. And next week, we're gonna talk about something I love just as much as dinosaurs. And all I can say is, may the force be with you. See you next week on Mr. D. And me.